this is a Japanese um, woodcut print by Konishi Hirasada. He made it um, approximately between 1851 and 1859. It's an object in the um, the category of Osaka prints, which are a type of Japanese print that was made in, in Osaka, and they are of a, um, they relate to the Kabuki theater. And this is an image of a particular actor, so it's a, it's a portrait. And these um, Osaka prints were, they're of note because they, uh, the printmakers use such beautiful um, techniques to make these, these prints. They're, they're very elaborate. They have um, fine embossing. They have burnishing. They use metallic pigments. They use um, materials to alter those metallic uh, pigments. They have opulent colors. They're really um, little jewels of objects. And this particular one has a has a frame. You know, it it was made to look like a, a panel painting that would a panel object that would have been on wood and would have been a devotional thing left at a, a Shinto shrine. So it's sort of made to mimic that. It has a lovely border. And um, the reason I chose this object, it's going to be uh, included in an exhibition in the fall. And it has so many beautiful, exquisite techniques that um, we can see if we examine them in about 10 different angles and different lights and um, under magnification in many different ways, we can discover them and appreciate them. Yet, if you look at this object in a very quick way, you might think it's a little, it's a little dull, or, or maybe it wouldn't uh, attract you because nothing's, no action is going on. And it is, as I said, hard to see some of those um, effects because they take special lighting. So. What I was um, interested in is having, if you, if conservators are um, often asked to provide materials information, so we're the ones who know about that, and we're, we're also the people who um, sometimes have the best imaging techniques of a certain sort, looking at things up close. We have that kind of information. So we aren't just asked to provide treatment of works, but, um, materials, information, media identification, that type of thing. So we'd like to help the curators be able to portray some of these really special techniques in the exhibition. And I was hoping that uh, some type of photography might help to highlight those techniques. Well, now I'm going to show you the actual model. You ready? Wow. OK. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? That's fantastic. So what I've done in this case is here is the full resolution mm -hmm. uh, image, and we'll be able to explore it and, and mm -hmm. do all this. And we all together kind of work to come up with this particular uh, position. So when you go to what's called specular enhancement, mm -hmm. it's treating the surface as if it were a perfect mirror. So right. anything that's etched or embossed, of mm -hmm. course, will, ref will, will reflect yeah. and refract. That's the word I was looking for, refract, refract light yeah. in different ways. So we can, of course, go back to the default and move mm -hmm. the light around. Mm -hmm. I also noticed that they, the handling dance are particularly visible. I mean, you don't even notice that on the outside. They're, they're pretty hard to capture. Um, now, but I, I did see those. There you go. You see something there. Yeah. Yeah. I just thought of another use for this. Sometimes, you know, we, we loan, um, I mean, really high value artworks. I mean, maybe something like this isn't of a value that it would warrant it, but when we lend them to other venues, uh, condition reports travel with them, and sometimes they're the most rudimentary photographs so we can locate such damages. If you sent something like this, you wouldn't even have to write what the issue was, because the person on the other end could, could find it. Um, we do that so that we can record whether or not damage happens during the travels of our artworks. But this is great. If you could summarize your, your reaction to this particular technique, and then if you will compare it to other techniques you've, you've used to explore mm -hmm. woodprints for us. Uh, 
there's no comparison. I mean, we, uh, say for instance, my sister, who's a fabulous photographer, she's just the best. Um, she could take a raking light photograph. It couldn't begin to compare to what we can see here. Um, I don't know what to say. It's, it's kind of fantastic. Um, uh, being speechless is fine. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, uh, it's, really, it's really pretty gorgeous. So, Susan, uh, why did you think that RTI would be useful in the museums, and, and what interested you about this technique? Once I took a seminar and understood more how this works, how you could, you get the, this topographical data and you're able to exaggerate it or enhance it, and you're doing it in a mathematical way, so there's no interpretation from whoever's doing it. And that, again, it's scientific principles, and that, that was exciting to me because that meant we could begin to see things that you couldn't normally see with either the naked eye or just with straight on raking light one shot. So right out of the shoot, so to speak, you guys were already thinking about that and thinking about it in a really good way and following standards as much as you can and involving different communities that had input into this and incorporating that into the technique and into the data capture. So that just totally spoke to me. And one of the things that I was thinking with this, with this uh, RTI imaging, when I first saw it, I was thinking in my head, you know, conservation, wouldn't this you know, be great because you can see much, so many details, or maybe the curators m may be able to see things that they can't see. But as I've begun to learn more about it and see more results, I'm thinking if we could get that into the galleries in some sort of an interactive kiosk, then people could, could begin to see other, way, other views of the artwork They'd have a different experience with it. They might see details that they, that they can't see otherwise, details that really mean something about the art or teach about the history of, of the art in terms of how it was made, what the people were thinking when they made it, um, what tools they used. I, th I, th I think that we could use this to help us in telling that story and in educating about the artwork that way.